In this video, I'm hopping on the trend and sharing with you guys the top 50 comic books in my collection. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swagglehaas. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you the top 50 comic books in my collection. That is right. This was a challenge that was started by Alex the Comic Book Hoarder. If you guys don't know who he is, he's a great YouTube content creator. I highly recommend you go check him out. I'll put a link in his description if you wanna go discover his channel if you haven't for some reason. Uh, but he started this challenge where he asked other YouTube content creators to share the top 50 books in their collection. And at first, uh, I was a little hesitant to do it because I felt sort of insecure because I've been watching some of you you guys with your comic book uh, uh, top 50 books and I, I'm just like blown away with some people's collections. Uh, but the comic book collector Geek, who if you guys don't know is another comic book YouTube content creator, uh, he made an incredible video with his top 50 uh, comic books and uh, he he specifically named me in the video uh, inviting me to do this this uh, 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 challenge, I guess you would call it. So I decided because he you know uh, thought of me and specifically called me out, I figured, hey, I, I might as well jump on this. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed the books I'm going to show you guys. I mean, one of the things is like you probably guys already get like a little bit of a preview uh, because because if you don't know now, uh, I had to swap out all 36 books behind my head because essentially the 36 books behind my head was over half of the work already. Uh, so I'm just going to essentially flip through the books uh, here with you guys today. And if you make it to the end of the video, you will find out uh, what my top books are, which may surprise you. And you guys will probably meme on me uh, for one of them. But hey, it's my favorite. It's one of my favorite books. What, what am I going to tell you? But before I get into the books for today, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, help support the channel, do one of those things. And I still have my 5,000 subscriber contest giveaway that I'm doing. So if you guys want a chance to win one of the books that I'm giving away in that video, uh, please navigate to that video and do the things that I talk about. All right. That said, let us jump into uh, my top 50 books. And this is going to be hard for me because uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to have to stop myself from rambling about each book. Otherwise, this is going to be a a 10 hour long video. Uh, so I'm just going to flip through the books. Uh, you know, I, I'd say the top 20 are probably in, in true order of how I value them. Um, but you know, some of these other ones here in like the fifties and forties area, there's just books that I just kind of grabbed and I was like, uh, yeah, I like these ones. And I, I don't know that like, I like number 47 more than 46. You know, I just kind of put the books together that I felt like, you know, it just kind of make me feel good about my collection. And again, um, you know, I just I just picked out the books and uh, it was really, really hard to do. Uh, th these are not necessarily all the most valuable books I have. You know, they're just ones that I grabbed and I'm just like, yeah, I just have a, an affinity towards this book. All right, enough talking. Let's go in this. We got a lot of books to show. All right, the first one here is one that I got in a dollar bin. This is probably my most favorite dollar bin find I've ever had. And this is Thor number 390. Uh, Captain America picks up Mjolnir for the first time. So love this book, found it in a dollar bin. One of the reasons why uh, I love it so much. Next one here, Marvel Super Heroes Secret Wars, number one of super clean, crystal clean, near men copy. Uh, I just love this book. I mean, it, it's the cover is terrible, but also at the same time, the cover is awesome. You know, I don't know, just nostalgia overload. Tales to Astonish, number 90, no, book number 48. Uh, this is the first appearance of Abomination. Just a cool character. Similarly here, number 46, Thor 148, first appearance of The Wrecker, a great B-tier villain. I hope we see The Wrecker in the MCU. I would love to see him personally. I'm a big fan. 45, Captain Marvel, number 12, first appearance of Captain Marvel. Uh, the character, also first appearance of Jan Rog, who is the character that um, Jude Law played in Captain Marvel. Uh, number 44 here, we have Silver Surfer, number two. Uh, this is the first appearance of the Badoon race, but uh, I've always just loved this cover. This purple is so, so beautiful to me. Um, just one of the, the books that I just, I just love. I just, there's no reason, you know, it's not like super crazy expensive. I just, I just happen to really like it. All right. Uh, 44 here, 43. I'm, I'm already losing count. Uh, Uncanny X-Men 121, first appearance of Alpha Flight. Gotta love Alpha Flight. Maybe they're going to show up in the MCU. Next one here, X Factor number six, first appearance of Apocalypse. Uh, I feel like this is a book that everyone should have in their collection. Uh, that's one of the first keys that I bought myself uh, when I got back into comic book collecting. Next one here, Uncanny X-Men 221, first appearance of Mr. Sinister. Gotta love Mr. Sinister. I think we're gonna see him in the MCU. I hope we're gonna see him in the MCU. All right, next up here, Amazing Spider-Man 51. I've talked about this one before. Second appearance of Kingpin. 
I just think this is a great book. First cover appearance of Kingpin. Um, just an awesome, awesome book to have. Next one here, The Man Called Nova. Nova number one, first appearance of Nova. This is one that, I, again, I feel like for, for all you speculators out there, definitely worth having Nova in your collection. It feels like we're going to get him in the MCU eventually. Next one, The Amazing Spider-Man number 361, first appearance of Carnage. Uh, again, we're going to see Carnage in the MCU uh, very soon, I, I assume. I'll probably uh, move on with that book, depending on the prices. All right, uh, next one here, The Eternals, number one, first appearance of The Eternals. First appearance of Icarus, I believe it is. Uh, and this is a book that you know I can't wait to see uh, get super hot once we get those Eternals trailers. All right, next book we have here, Marvel feature, number one, The Defenders. Uh, first appearance of The Defenders team. I think the most underrated team in all of uh, superhero comic books. I think the Defenders are so awesome. I would love to see the Defenders come to the MCU, and maybe we're going to get them because uh, if we see Submariner and Silver, Sur Silver Surfer soon, blah, 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 Silver Surfer soon, um, we might get the Defenders team. All right, next one here, uh, X-Men number 64, first appearance of Sunfire. Gotta love Sunfire, Japanese X-Men. Uh, that'd be cool. You know, we're starting to see a couple more Asian superheroes. Be very cool to see Sunfire as well. All right, next one here, Captain America 110. This is just that classic Storenko cover. Uh, first appearance of uh, Viper, Madam Hydra Viper, uh, which is also another reason why this book is kind of cool, but just a great, great early Captain America, great Captain America cover. All right, a couple of Avengers books here. Avengers 19, first appearance of the Swordsman. Gotta love that. Apparently he's going to show up in the Hawkeye show. Next up here, Avengers number 23, first appearance of Ravona, uh, Kang, Kang's love interest. I got to think that her story is going to show up in the MCU. Avengers 25, classic Doctor Doom cover. Just love this cover. Just love Doctor Doom. I mean, that's this is probably one of the better Doctor Doom books that I have uh, in my collection because I don't own any of the uh, FF stuff. Uh, here we go, Thor 134, first appearance of the High Evolutionary. Got to love the High Evolutionary. Um, he's one of my favorite uh, uh, super super villains uh, in Marvel. Actually, I've always loved him. I, I had you know you guys know I had the comic book cards, so all my a lot of my introductions to the characters were from the comic book cards. So uh, I always love the High Evolutionary one. Next up here, Tales to Astonish number fifty, first appearance of the Human Top. I just love Silver Age Tales to Astonish stuff. Very 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 cool. Another one here, Strange Tales 123, first appearance of the Beetle, which I think is really cool. We might see the Thunderbolts eventually in the MCU. Beetle uh, eventually goes on to be uh, Mach 1, Mach 7? I forget his name, but he, he becomes one of the Thunderbolts. So who knows? Maybe Beetle will show up. Tales to Astonish 48, first appearance of the por Porcupine. Yeah, I like the Porcupine. What are you going to say? I just, I love these characters. Another Tales to Astonish book here, number 57. Beautiful, beautiful cover. Spider-Man making an appearance in the Tales to Astonish series. Uh, I just think that this cover is so beautiful with the blues, the reds, and the whites. So just just one that, that I just have an attachment to because I, I love the, the look of it so much. Moving on, Tales of Spence here. Tales of Spence 47. This is the first appearance of a character known as the Melter who is one of the original members of the Masters of Evil. Um, again, I, I'm a big believer in the Masters of Evil, and I love these old books. I love the Melter. I don't know. I, I love the B-tier villains. Again, they're my, they're, they're my favorites. Another Strange Tales book here, First Appearance of Living Tribunal. Uh, this one is a really cool one because when I bought this, I, you know, I found it in the wild. I bought this, and on the inside of the cover, uh, there is actually an autograph by Jim Steranko. And you can totally tell because he's got a very distinct uh, autograph with like, you know, he does like a circle with like the O and everything like that. So I have an autographed copy of uh, First Appearance of the Living Tribunal from Jim Steranko, which is very, very cool. Uh, this is a love-hate one for me, Journey into Mystery 109. Uh, just a classic cover of Thor and Magneto going at it with Magneto uh, trying to... Uh, uh, magnetize the, the hammer. Uh, this is a, a really lower grade one and, and one that I created the tape pull that you see right there. So uh, one of my one of my favorite covers of all time that I created a tape pull for myself. Uh, firing through these Journey into Mystery ones. Again, just another uh, great Journey into Mystery one here. Uh, first appearance of Grey Gargoyle and uh, first appearance of Carnilla, apparently, which is going to maybe show up in the MCU in the Loki show. Uh, another one here, another uh, original um, Masters of Evil here. We have first appearance of Radioactive Man, Journey into Mystery, number 93. This is actually the oldest comic book that I own. Kind of a fun fact there. I think that's a early 1963. I don't have any 62 books, 
Uh, but that so that one is the er, oldest book that I own. Uh, other one here, Fantastic Four Fifty Three, second appearance of Black Panther, first appearance of the Claw. Very very cool book in my opinion. Very very underrated. I love the cover. I think it's so cool. Another one here, Incredible Hulk One Hundred Two, big premiere issue of the uh, Incredible Hulk uh, that started his ongoing series. Which again, another another cool book in my opinion. Some more Avengers ones here. Avengers number nine, first appearance of Wonder Man. Definitely another cool book. Just uh, happy I have this one. I'm working on my Avengers Grail run. So again, a lot of my books are Avengers books. Uh, Avengers number 16. Uh, this is the classic Avengers Assemble Captain America cover. Uh, this is also the third appearance of Kang the Conqueror, I believe it is. So kind of a cool book, just a classic cover. I mean, I love that cover. Love the purple there. This one's very cool. Incredible Hulk 340. Classic copper book. Uh, this one is, of course, the classic Todd McFarlane cover where we see uh, Hulk in the reflection of Wolverine. And this is one of those books that I never had this as, as a kid, but uh, it was one of the first books I had seen when I first stepped into a comic book store that I was like, oh, that, that book is really cool. I like that. Uh, another one here, another great copper book. Uh, actually, maybe this is Bronze Age. When is copper? 88? 86? I don't know. You guys tell me. Amazing Spider-Man 252. First appearance of the Black Suit, newsstand edition. Uh, this one's a really, really cool one. Uh, got this uh, before the craze for this book uh, took off because I'm sure as you guys are, are aware, some of the prices for that is totally insane. All right, getting close here, getting close to the end. Tales to Astonish, number 63. This is the first appearance of the leader. Again, I'm always going to have an affinity towards um, the, the villains, the supervillains, and leader is one of those that I just love. And uh, this was a very, very cool book. All right, I've talked about them already. Avengers number six, first appearance of the Masters of Evil as a team. This is a very, very cool one. Melter, Radioactive Man, Zemo, and the Black Knight. Still need to get that Tales to Astonish 52. Still working on that. Next one here, I have Doctor Strange 169. And this is just a great, uh, presents well, Doctor Strange book. You know, if you, if you can't ever get that Strange Tales uh, 110, I feel like this is maybe the next best book to pick up, 169. All right, next one I got here, Strange Tales 111, second appearance of Doctor Strange and first appearance of Baron Mordo. This is one that I got up in Canada. So glad I have this book. I think this is an awesome cover. And first appearance of Asbestos Man. You know, we talked about this in our second appearances video uh, that I did with Bryce Comics. Gotta love Asbestos Man. All right, this next one here, Tales of Suspense number 50, first appearance of the Mandarin. This one, I mean, what are you going to say? That shang Tree cheek trailer came out and this one blew up like crazy. I mean, I've always loved the Mandarin as a character. Uh, you know, I, I've always, I'm half Asian. I have an affinity towards the Asian superheroes and supervillains. So I've always loved the Mandarin. Can't wait to see him in the movie. Uh, Journey into Mystery 103, first appearance of Enchantress. This is one that, you know, I just think that this cover is incredible. I, I love this cover. And this is a book that uh, I, I always wanted. So I'm very, very happy I have this. This one is... Still obviously expensive, but if we see Enchantress in the MCU, who knows where that book's going to go. All right, coming down to the, the wire here. I think we're in our like kind of top-ish 10 or so. Captain America 100, beautiful copy I have right here. Um, this is obviously the first uh, Captain America solo um, ongoing series that, that he would make, uh, Captain America 100. One of the first kind of bigger keys that I got for myself um, that I was really excited to have. Um, but now I have some other uh, Captain America books that I can talk about and we'll certainly get there. Uh, next one here, Silver Surfer number four. What are you going to say? This is just the incredible cover of Silver Surfer and Thor battling it out. Beautiful John Buscema work. Um, one of the the main books that I've always wanted to have in my collection. And again, when I got it, I was so happy. Never, never, never leaving the PC, basically. Next up here, one of my favorite supervillains, probably my second favorite supervillain, villain next to Thanos. This is Avengers number eight, first appearance of Kang the Conqueror. This is a book that I actually always wanted before uh, we got even Kang the Conqueror in the MCU. He was probably my, my second favorite supervillain of all time. Uh, and this was the first book, big book that I ever spent money on. Like I remember getting this for $200 or whatever it was. And I was like, dude, that is a lot of money. So this was that first like big purchase that I got for myself. And um, I guess I'm in the green now, you know, which is good. 
Uh, all right, next up here, another one that's very cool. First appearance of Mephisto, Silver Surfer number three. This was the first key book that I ever identified as a key when I was a kid in an LCS. Like I remember walking into an LCS and seeing uh, Silver Surfer 3 on the wall behind behind the, the store clerk. I must have been six or seven years old. And that's what I, I was able to like very much remember that specific cover and be like, oh, why is that book special? Because it's like hanging on the wall behind him. All right, we're in the top five right now. We're in the top five right now. All right. Number five, Invincible Iron Man, number one. This, of course, is the big premiere issue of Iron Man. Uh, a very cool book, a classic cover. This one is never leaving the PC. Um, just so happy I got my hands on this book. Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr., what he did for the character, obviously is 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 incredible. And uh, this book is is just a beautiful, beautiful collector item to have. All right, number four here, number four. And you guys might be surprised because I'm going to show you my top three books and you guys are going to be like, what? But uh, this is why comic book collecting is so interesting. Uh, number four here is Avengers, number four, my only slab, uh, but first appearance of Captain America in the Silver Age. Again, I made a grail video uh, talking about how I picked this up for myself just a couple weeks back. And this is one of the biggest books that I've ever bought for myself. In fact, this is the biggest book I've ever bought for myself. Uh, so this one is really, really cool. Uh, and my first slab. So, you know, definitely happy to have this in the collection. Avengers number four. All right, uh, now we're in the top three, and you guys are going to think this is really interesting. But this is this is to me where uh, what makes you know a series like this so interesting is that you know I kind of gave you my top fifty books. Again, uh, they're not necessarily like uh, uh, the top fifty in them being the most expensive. I mean, it kind of went that way, except I, I didn't really sort it out so specifically that way. Um, but these books right here are not my favorites because they are um, expensive. Uh, this one right here. Number three, Amazing Spider-Man, number 361, second print. And this is the first appearance of Carnage. And why is this book so special to me is that I got into comic book collecting in the early 90s. Uh, my dad, my brother, and I went to comic book stores uh, in like 1990, 1991. That was the first time I stepped in. And this particular book is uh, one that we bought off the shelf. Like this, remember the second print coming around, Carnage was huge, you know, in 91, and we bought this one off the shelf. So this is that original book that, that you know, was in my first collection. This is probably like the biggest key that I had when I was a little kid. So this is one that is gonna stay in the collection, always gonna be in the collection here. And um, yeah, I'm, uh, even with the movie, I'm never letting go of this one, the second print. You know, I have, I showed you guys the first print. Uh, I'm happy to sell that one. But this second print here, uh, you can't touch that. You can't, you'll, you'll never get it out of my hands. This next one here, again, another book. And you guys are going to meme on me. Uh, but this is Dark Hawk number one. That is right. Dark Hawk number one is the second most important book in my collection. Uh, I own five copies of this book. But... Why is this book so special? This very specific one is because this is the Dark Hawk book that I owned when I was a little kid, when I set foot into a store, LCS for the very first time, and Dark Hawk was coming out, and that was the character that I was like, that guy looks cool, I want that. And I remember buying this book, uh, it, the, the LCS had it in the shelf behind uh, the counter. And I remember my dad, you know, he, I, I was getting Dark Hawk books and then we came, we were looking for Dark Hawk number one and we finally found it and it was being sold for $7 and 50 cents. I'll never forget it. And uh, I remember the guy pulling it off the, you know, the wall on the counter behind and, and giving it to me and my dad. And this is the one, this is the one, the Dark Hawk number one. And uh, for that reason, it is my second favorite book. Uh, which leads us to my favorite book of all time. And that's gonna be Wolverine number one. First Wolverine ongoing series. And why is this book so special to me? Well, my brother, his, uh, his character that he loved the most was Wolverine. And when I got Dark Hawk number one as my grail when I was just six or seven years old, uh, my brother got Wolverine number one that was his grail uh, and s similar thing. I remember them taking it off the sh shelf and I think it was like $8. It was like, oh man, we gotta spend $8 for this book. Um, and so this is, this is the Wolverine number one that he had. And unfortunately my brother is no longer with us, but, um, but I was able to 
inherit his collection and keep it going for him. And for that reason, Wolverine number one always reminds me of him. And this is the most important book in my collection. Um, doesn't matter how valuable this thing ever gets. Uh, you could take my slab away, my grail, my Captain America for, um, I'd sell any of my books uh, behind me um, if I had to. But uh, this one right here, Wolverine number one, is never leaving the, the, the PC um, because uh, it's, it's, you can't, rep I can't replace it. I can't replace this copy ever because this is the copy, not just Wolverine number one, a copy. And uh, yeah, I got a little, I got emotional uh, doing this video. Um, and I guess that's what's, that's what's so crazy about this hobby is like, you know, when I was really thinking about what are the most important books, um, you can't put a price on certain books in your collection. They're just, there's just ones that uh, come with memories and an emotional attachment um, that you, you, you can't put a number on. So anyways, those are my top 50 books. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to uh, get so emotional just then. Um, thank you guys for, for starting this challenge. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I definitely extend the challenge to other comic book YouTubers who I haven't seen them do this yet. Uh, so I would nominate uh, people like Bryce Comics. I'd nominate Journos Comics and Pop Culture, Newbie Comics. Uh, who else is out there that hasn't done it? Uh, how about some of the you know Como comic books? Uh, I'd love to see his collection. You guys, I think, would be blown away by his. Uh, anyways, that is all I have for this video. Those are my top 50 comic books. Uh, leave a like, comment, or subscribe if you're enjoying the content. Uh, be sure to check out my 5K giveaway, and I will see you in the next video.